Today we're going to derive the coupling equations for the flow of a Newtonian linear viscous fluid. These equations are known as the Navier-Stokes equations and uh, perhaps the most important equations in fluid mechanics. So recall for a Newtonian linear viscous fluid that the stress Tij is proportional to the rate of deformation tensor dKl. And we can write that Tij equals minus P delta ij plus bijk times dkl, or substituting for the rate of deformation tensor in terms of the components of the velocity gradients, we have minus p delta ij plus one half bijkl times del vk del xl plus del vl del xk, where p is a function of density and temperature and the components of the fourth order viscosity tensor bijkl are also a function of density and temperature. If there's no flow, then the fluid at rest supports a hydrostatic pressure, P, and so the stress is just Tij equals minus P times delta Ij. Because this represents an extra unknown in the problem, an extra equation is required, and there are two uh, main cases. The first case is incompressibility, namely con the constraint that the density is constant which we've seen from mass conservation, gives us that the divergence of the velocity vector or the trace of the rate of deformation tensor is zero. Alternatively, if the fluid is compressible, then we need an equation of state, such as the ideal gas equation P equals rho R theta, where theta is the absolute temperature and R is the gas constant. We can show that a Newtonian fluid can only be isotropic, which simplifies the fourth order viscosity tensor down to two parameters, lambda and mu, such that bijkl equals lambda delta ij delta kl plus two mu delta ik delta jl. And then substituting this into our constitutive equation, we get that tij equals minus p plus lambda times dkk delta ij plus two mu dij, where mu is called the viscosity. Or in direct notation, t equals minus p plus lambda trace d all times i plus 2 mu times d. For an incompressible Newtonian viscous fluid, this further simplifies, making use of the fact that div v or dkk equals zero. And so this term here disappears, and we're left with tij equals minus p delta ij plus 2 mu dij, or t equals minus p times i plus 2 mu times d. Now recall that the equations of motion uh, rho times the acceleration, the material derivative of the velocity with respect to time, is equal to the divergence of the stress plus rho times the body force vector. In index notation, this will be rho dv j dt equals del tij del xi plus rho bj. And now substituting the expression for the stress from the equation for an isotropic incompressible Newtonian viscous fluid, this would be del del xi of minus p delta ij plus 2 mu dij plus rho bj, which is minus del p del xj, so minus del p del xi times delta ij is minus del p del xj, plus mu times del vi del xj plus del vj del xi, differentiated with respect to xi, plus the body force term which gives us minus del p del xj plus mu times del 2 vi del xi del xj plus del 2 vj del xi del xi plus rho bj. However, note that this term here is del del xj of del vi del xi, which is the divergence of v, which is zero for an incompressible fluid. So this term disappears, and the equations of motion simplify to rho dvj dt equals minus del p del xj plus mu times del 2 vj del xi del xi plus rho bj. So here they are again, and we can also write this in direct notation as rho dv dt, which expands to rho del v del t plus rho v dot grad v is equal to minus grad p plus mu Laplacian of v plus rho times b. 
So these are the Navier-Stokes equations, and the terms represent, this term here is the transient inertial force, and this term here is called the convective inertial force. So these terms are both mass per unit volume times acceleration, but this is the acceleration as seen by a fixed Eulerian observer. This is the relative acceleration uh, as seen by the moving particles. So together, the net inertial force has these two terms, which we call the transient and convective inertial forces. Then we have a pressure gradient, uh, a term due to the viscosity, the viscous forces, and the body forces. So these are the five terms that constitute the Navier-Stokes equation, the conservation of linear momentum for a linear, isotropic, incompressible Newtonian fluid. If we write the Navier-Stokes equations out in full, using u, v, and w for the components of the velocity vector, and x, y, and z for the spatial coordinates, then the equations look like this, del u del t, plus mu du dx plus v du dy plus w du dz is equal to minus 1 upon rho dp dx plus mu upon rho del 2 u del x squared plus delta u del y squared plus delta u del z squared plus bx, where you can see we've divided through by rho in this form. Similarly, the second equation involves del v del t and derivatives of v with respect to x, y, and z the pressure gradient with respect to y, and uh, Laplacian of the v component of the velocity vector plus the y component of the body force vector. And finally, in the z direction, del w del t plus these terms involving partial derivatives of w with respect to x, y, and z equals minus the pressure gradient in the z direction plus mu over rho times the Laplacian of the z component of the velocity. And in addition, we have the incompressibility equation uh, from conservation of mass gives us that del u del x plus del v del y plus del w del z equals zero. And we've already assumed this in the derivation of the equation, but we often need to use this condition to simplify the or constrain the flow field.